Hello, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, this is your brother group. Once again, we are here live uh, on Facebook. And uh, tonight, I'm going to talk about the life of Mother Mary because for us uh, as a practice that before, we don't believe that uh, she's the mother of God or the mother of Jesus Christ only. But when it comes to divinity or mother of God, we don't call her that one. And uh, tonight, I'm going to discuss, to share to you so that it will give us clarification because there are some also uh, believers in the Lord, especially the Roman Catholic, who said, no, what is the rule of Mother Mary when it comes to salvation? But before we start anything, let us uh, pray first. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight, for this wonderful evening that you gave to us. I ask your Holy Spirit to move to each and every one of us, so that we might know the fullness of your saving knowledge to your Bible, to your Word. And I ask also the intercession of Mother Mary that she, she will intercede tonight so that we will be able to ponder the word that I'm going to share. Bless us, Father, and bless also the, our bishops, priests, and our friends, and uh, our close relatives tonight as they watch this uh, Facebook Live. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But before we start, uh, I'm going to read first the gospel of the lord for tonight so the gospel of the lord can be found in the book of matthew chapter 12 verses uh, okay chapter 12 verses 1 to 8 and this is what the bible uh, has told us i would like to read at the time <clears throat> jesus was going through a field of grain on the sabbath his disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the parishes saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were angry? How he went into the house of God and ate bread of offering which neither he nor his companions, but only the priest could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you something greater than the temple is here. If you know what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned this innocent man, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Thanks be to God. So, this is an issue actually regarding whether we have to worship God during Sabbath or not. Because usually we, the Catholic, we worship our Sabbath is on Sunday. But you know, if you try to look at if you we just read a while ago on how the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked the Pharisees because the Pharisees is concerned more about the rituals inside the the temple but here Jesus Christ is trying to to to, to not to violate but to change the mind of the people at the time that the Sabbath is not is not only uh, we're doing some rituals, but there are many things that we're going to do during Sabbath. When in fact, Jesus Christ performs miracles during Sabbath day. So, no time na yun is pinagbawalan yung mga, especially doing miracles or healing during the Sabbath. But Jesus Christ, in-emphasize niya ang power ni God during Sabbath day. That's the most important thing. And not only that, the eight also during the Sabbath day. They ate the grains. Pinagbawalan yun sa law of Israel during that time not to eat even single food or whatever because it violates. And that is only the law of that, uh, the law of uh, especially the Moses or the law of Moses, especially the followers of Moses. But when Jesus Christ came, 
what he did is that he gave more emphasis on him because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. We are no longer confined on a certain rituals that was did by the uh, by the Israelites, by the by the Jewish people at the time. Since Jesus Christ came, we have now the freedom to worship God. We have now the, the actually every day every day we have to worship God. That is only Sunday because if you try to look at in the book of Acts chapter two, three, four, and five. Every day, the people of God went to the temple. So every day, they gathered together, worshiped God inside the temple. They ate together inside the temple. The disciples and the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ at the time. So, meaning, our worship is not confined only during Sunday or during Saturday as what the Seventh-day Adventists. Because God wants us to worship Him every day in our lives. When in fact in John chapter 4 verse 24, God said, God is a spirit and the worshiper must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, truth. What is the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth. That's why we have to worship him. Not just only on that day, but every day in our lives. Wherever we go, we will talk and worship the Lord God of Israel. So, I think it is clear already that we the Catholic we are not confined as what the uh, Seventh-day Adventists that we worship only during Saturday. Our worship is every day. When in fact here in Santo Rosario, mayroon tayong uh, worship every day. Wala pa yung pandemic, so every hour mayroon talagang pagsamba kay Lord. So, yun. Kasi alam natin ang katotohanan na ang pagsamba ni Lord ay hindi lang Sunday, but every day. Because God is worthy to be praised. So, that's the gospel of the day. And tonight, I'm going to focus more on the life of Mother Mary. Because as what I did before as a pastor, as a Protestant pastor, I don't even preach about Mary. I don't even talk about His Immaculate Birth. I don't even talk as assumptions of Mother Mary or that uh, she was full of grace in the book of Luke. We never, I never talk about that one when I was a Protestant pastor before. But when I returned to this Catholic faith and embraced back to this Catholic faith, I found out that Mary has a major rule for our salvation. So I thank God that I am now a Roman Catholic and also a lover of Mother Mary because before, actually, we hate her. We don't believe on her because she was just an impostor. She was just the, the cohorts of the Antichrist. That's what I thought before. But you know what happened when I went to Korea? That was five years. I went there as a pastor for the Presbyterian Church. You know what happened? This is stuck inside me. When uh, This is the turning point of my conversion. Why I converted to the Roman Catholic? Because one day, it was Sunday morning, when I prepared my suit for preparation for me to preach the Word of God in Shing Wong church so you know what i saw mother mary not just only a vision but it was very clear to my eyes she she smiled at me she never says a word but you know what happened deep inside me there is a hunger a vacuum and now uh, when i found her when i go back to the bible and study about her that vacuum uh, that uh, that emptiness inside me you know what happened and fill in the power of the holy spirit because of what I read from the Bible, especially about our Mother Mary. So, nandito na ako ngayon sa Katoliko because of the Mother of God. I am now a propagator of uh, the Virgin Mary. Wherever I go, I speak about my Mother Mary. If someone will invite me for uh, a collection or seminars for LSS, mayroon talaga, include talaga, nandiyan talaga si Mother Mary during my talk. So tonight, I'm going to summarize the story on the book of Luke chapter 1, starting chapter 1, verses 26. You know, at that time when, Mama, when Mary, not, not yet, uh, she was not yet uh, encountered the, the, the angel Gabriel, every day, early in the morning, she wakes up and then she will pitch or, uh, water. Uh, she walked from her house to the well. It takes around 15 minutes and then bringing the 
the jar and he put some water in the jar every day. That is his her, I know, the routine, you know, because she could not wait that her mother, mother, yung ina ni Mama Mary na magano sa kanya mag sabi kumuha ka ng tubig. But she herself, because actually she's a, a good servant, she's a good child of a, uh, of a, uh, sino yung pa? Saint Anne, yeah, Saint Anne. Huh? So every day, uh, I'm walking. So every, every day, I'm walking water to fish. And you know what? 15 hours of walking from her house, going to the well, and the place was so muddy, sticky muddy. And you know, you know the dung of the, the animals was there. But she, she, she would just walk. And then she never says a word. But just to fetch water. Every day, that is her routine. One day, when she go back to her house, you know what happened? He saw an angel bowing down to her. Kasi alam ng angel eh, sabi ng angel eh, itong boss ko si Mary. Boss niya si Mary because alam ng angel because, you know, she's, she's a smart angel, angel Gabriel. She, he, he, he bent, he bowed down. And then, Mary was amazed upon seeing this angel. And you know what? The angel declares unto Mary. And she, he said, Be at peace. God has found favor on you. And then Mary responded, What kind of salutation is this? Mary angel said, God has found favor on you. And you will have a baby. You will conceive a baby. And you will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. So this is the turning point of our salvation actually. Because if Mama Mary says no, there will be no Jesus Christ in the flesh right now. But what is the response of Mama Mary? Simple lang yung response ni Mama Mary. Sabi niya, Peat meke, birbom si kundum tukon. In other words, be it unto me, I'm just only the handmaid of God, be it unto me according to your word. And because of that, ano nangyari kapatid? The triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit was really, ano sila, they're happy upon listening the, the response of Mother Mary. So be it unto me. So because of that, salvation just started through Mother Mary. But when I was a Protestant, we don't believe on that. Actually, sabi pa sa ating mga senior pastor before, pag ayaw ni Mary, ni Mary meron namang iba dyan. Hindi naman ganun si Lord eh. Pag ayaw ni Mama Mary, then the Lord God, God the Father, hindi na pwede mapigilan si Mary. And he will, he will, they will never, the time God will never choose another woman. <coughs> because what is there in their, in their mind is that they have found favor on Mary. So because Mama Mary has the right perspective towards God, so what she did is that, be it unto me. And because of that, we receive God's salvation. And because of that, the church born, the Holy Roman Catholic, ano nangyari? Because of that, nag-exist. The apostles came, the, the, our church existed 2,000 years ago. Because of, Mama, because of Mama Mary's yes, the seven sacraments, nandoon sa church natin. But sometimes we Catholic, we don't give more emphasis. We don't even more study about the sacraments. So tonight, I'm going to talk to you about more about Mother Mary, but this will be based on our catechism, the Catholic faith. No? Sorry, balik tad kasi yung using the ano, uh, catechism of the Catholic faith. Ito mga kapatid, I would like to read to you the, the Immaculate Conce Conception of Mary. Sabi dito, in paragraph 490, to become the mother of the Savior Mary was enriched by God's God with gifts appropriate to such rule. The angel Gabriel at the moment of the Annunciation salutes her as full of grace. Now, if you are full of grace, ang tanong nito, this is another, one of the reasons why Mary preserved her immaculate or virgin or pure from holy because Mary was full of grace. If you are full of grace, there's no chance for sin to come into your life. And since Mama Mary is full of grace, because 
she has a right relationship with her with her God and because of that he was she was fought with the power of the Lord and this time when the angel Gabriel meet her the angel Gabriel declare you're full full of grace now can we be like mother Mary also? can we be like her can we allow God to to operate in our life can we allow God or the Holy Spirit will move and saturate in our life so that we could be like Mama Mary yes the answer yes we can do that if we will just surrender our life to God everything that we have if we surrender to him our carnality of our mind we surrender to him and we should have the mind of Christ we could be like her also because Mother Mary was a good example for us to follow to listen to Jesus Christ to obey God and to worship the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob so this is the catechism of our Catholic faith full of grace and because of that the conception confesses as Pope Pius the ninth proclaimed in 1854 that the most blessed Virgin Mary was from the first moment of her conception by a singular grace and privileges of Almighty God and by virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ Savior of the human race preserved immune from all stain of original sin Wow this is good actually Mother Mary is free from sin <coughs> free from Adamic sin and even free from personal sin because of the virtue of the merit that she has the baby boy you know what I don't have any angel gave her blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit thy womb Jesus Christ if you look at mother Mary and Jesus Christ do not look at them as two different distinct, distinct person when it comes to personality or in the flesh look at them as one if mama Mary is blessed Jesus Christ is blessed also vice versa if Jesus Christ is holy then mother Mary also is holy of course the producer of that baby boy must be holy otherwise Jesus Christ is not holy but if you try to look at the Bible the people of God the apostles the disciples who follow Jesus Christ declare that Jesus this man this Jesus Christ their Lord this their master is free from sin is holy so of course the evidence the one who produced here is no other than mother mary who is holy also so if you try to understand the bible we should sometimes there are many people that when they interpret the bible they just study and read that's all but you know what if you interpret the bible we should interpret the bible according to its context according to this history according to the tradition culture and even there are some uh, uh, words like parables like figure of speech those are things that we're going to observe as a pastor before we have what they call the the study of the bible about uh, typology study of the bible now what do you mean by typology study of the bible what is written previously it happens in the near future so meaning it was already uh, prefigured but it happens to our time like for instance the Old Testament is the shadow and type of the coming Messiah that is prefigured in the Old Testament now if you try to understand the Bible makita natin si Mama Mary in the Old Testament at saka sa New Testament but this time when you try to study you read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and 15 ito ang sabi ni Lord this was the first prophecy that was being mentioned in the Old Testament that the God of Israel declares, sabi niya, you, sabi niya sa kay Satan, you will have, I will put an enmity, enmity between you and the woman. And the woman will bruise your, your, your head and you will, I know, bite the heels of the woman. Strike. Okay, strike, something like that. You know what? Ang tatong dito, who is this woman what was, that was being prefigured? Okay? After the first woman, Eve, fall into temptation, commit mistakes to God, God put an enmity. But this was 
being prefigured by God so that for the near future so that when we look at in the New Testament makita natin dito si Mama Mary talagang there was an enmity in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 anong sinasabi ni John the Beloved mayroon siya nakita a vision from heaven mayroon siya nakita isang babae that the babae is about a crown with 12 crown uh, with 12 stars and then he clothed with the sun he stepped on the moon and then he is about to deliver the baby and that woman is no other than Mother Mary. It was being prefigured because why? In the New Testament, nandoon ang demonyo. Nandoon si Lucifer. Ang sabi ni John naman, may nakita naman akong ibang ano, vision na mayroong isang dragon and he's about to devour the baby. But God, the, the, the angel helped her and then they snatched this woman, they put it on the highest level of dimension of spirituality. Meaning, this woman, Mother Mary, was successful. The first woman, the first Eve, ano nangyari kapatid? He gave, she gives death to all mankind. But this second woman gives us life. There's always two. During the time of Abraham, during the time of, uh, not Abraham, the time of uh, Adam, there, mayroon Eve. Ngayon naman, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, mayroon tayong second Adam. And who is the second Adam? Jesus Christ who give life. Of course, mayroon din second Eve, the successful one, the conqueror. That's why our mother is a conqueror. Every time that we have a problem in life, we will talk to Mother Mary, and Mother Mama Mary will listen to us, and will give us all the solution of our problem. Ito ang magandang nangyari. Is this a coincidence? or really planned by God na mayroong typology. We don't know this about this prefigure before when I was a Protestant. Because our interpretation that this woman is not Mary. It's only, a, a, it's only, a, it's, it's Israel, it is only, a, you know, some, some English and Christo, it is a church. No, it was not. Because mayroon tayong tinatawag na interpretation sa, especially when I was a Protestant, mayroon tayong tinatawag na Sula Escriptura. If there is a Sula Escriptura, meaning to say, you don't have to change anything that is found in the Bible. Because Sula Escriptura is Bible alone. And why is it that when we, when we read the book of Revelation chapter 12, bakit tayo mga Protestante, we change it. This woman will change to Jerusalem or Israel. But the Bible says to not change that one. Sola Escritura nga eh. So itong babae na ito, if we apply the Sola Escritura, itong babae na ito, mga kapatid, this no other than Mother Mary. I will give you another example. When Mama Mary went to Judean Hills, he stayed there, there for three months. He went there just to meet her cousin Elizabeth. Ito kapatid. Ito ang nakita ko sa when I returned to this Catholic faith. It was also the same place in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 1 to 23. It was also the same place on the western part of Jerusalem, the city of Israel, the same place that King David in the Old Testament went to Judean hills for three months. Karga nila, bitbit nila, yung Ark of the Covenant. And then sabi ni King David, Who am I that the presence of God is with me? He's talking about the Ark of the Covenant. And in the same thing also in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26, 27, 28, sabi naman ni Elizabeth, Who am I that the Mother of God is in my presence? That is Luke 1, 4, 3, that the mother of the Christ is in my presence. So, in the Old Testament, David danced before the Ark of the Covenant. He rejoiced, he jumped, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why he's able to jump, he sing, he clap in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. Balik tayo kay Mama Mary. When John the Baptist inside the womb of uh, Elizabeth, when he heard the salutation of Mother Mary to her mother, Elizabeth, anong nangyari kay John? The Baptist leaped for joy, nag-dance inside the womb of Mother Mary. 
Coincidence? Or really planned by God? Si David ng dance, in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, si John the Baptist naman, nag-dance, nag joy, in the presence of Mother Mary. Now, my question tonight, who is, ano ba talaga, sino ba talaga si Mother Mary? You know what? In our own intellect, in a simple understanding, Mother Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. Bakit? I will give you an example. I will give you a, a, a story. Why? What is found in the Ark of the Covenant where David danced, the same also that is found in the womb of Mother Mary. Ano ba ang laman? Ang laman sa Old Covenant or the Ark of the Covenant is the bread of life, the manna of life. Nandun. Ano ang alaman sa tiyan ni Mama Mary? Jesus Christ, the bread of life. And another thing is that can be found in the Ark of the Covenant is yung stop ni Aaron, symbolizing priestly anointing. Inside the womb of Mama Mary, Jesus Christ, the great high priest and king. Coincidence? Hindi po. This is planned by God so that we might understand more on God's plan for salvation to mankind upon using Mother Mary. Ano pa? Ano ang laman sa Old Covenant or the Ark of the Covenant? The two tablets, the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. Ano naman ang laman sa tiyan ni Mama Mary? Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Coincidence? Hindi to coincidence. This was really planned by God that Mother Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. Ano pa ang mga ebidensya? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, sabi ni John the Beloved, And I saw heavens open, and I saw the temple of God, and inside the temple of God, the Ark of the Covenant. And then, Revelation 19, 11 is the last verse of that chapter 19. If you continue to read, that is already Revelation 12. Now, the original Bible, walang verses at walang chapter. If you continue to read Revelation 19, uh, Revelation 11, 19, hantong ka sa Revelation chapter 2. Anong sinabi ni John? And I saw the woman wearing like a sun and he saw that this woman having a seven star on her head and she was clothed with the glory of God. So, ikunik mo ang 19, ang Revelation 11, 19 to 12. Ang sagot dyan, kapatid, isa lang. Yung nakita ni John the Beloved na Ark of the Covenant is no other than the Mother of God, Mother Mary. That's why tayo mga Katoliko, we are so blessed, we are so thankful to God that we have this kind of faith. We have this kind of teaching. Meron pa mga kapatid na ayaw namin noon. That hindi pwede tatawagin si Mother Mary as Mother of God. Because for us before, that it was a blasphemy. Because there was actually, walang mother si Lord. Walang mother si God. Hindi yung totoo kapatid. Sabi ni Luke, Luke 148, sabi ni Elizabeth. Why is it that the Mother of God is or the mother of our Lord is in me. Now, the mother of our Lord, Lord and God can be equate. You can equate Lord to God. Because that is the title of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God of Israel. In the book of Revelation 1.17, the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. Meaning to say, this Lord, this God, can be equate as one. Therefore, you can call Mary as mother of God. And why is it that we neglect that one? When I was a Protestant, we neglect that one. But when in fact, that is the right thing to do here, to understand the Bible, that Mary, really the mother of God. But th that is just only a title. Mary is not God. Hindi siya Diyos. She's just only used by God. She was just only uh, full of grace. And she could never be a God, because there's only one God. But that, that's only the title that Mary has that she is the mother of God. Because if you deny Mary as mother of God, you deny also the divinity of Jesus Christ as God. Kaya nga tayong mga Katoliko, we have to understand, when I went to Kalayan Island in Batanes group of island, sabi ko doon, sino dito nagsamba ka na Mary? 
marami nang taasan sa kanilang mga kamay. Then I rebuke them. No! We don't have to worship Mary because in the catechism of the Catholic faith, <coughs> excuse me, that worship due to God alone and we just only give veneration, respect to the saints, to the angels, and even to the mother of God, the mother of Jesus Christ, the mother of our Lord. That's why, tayo mga katoliko, nagrespeto tayo kay Mama Mary. Not, not necessarily if you respect a person as worship, no. Not necessarily that if you bend your knee, that's worship, no. Because in the book of Genesis chapter 19, when Lot encountered the three angels, he bent his knee. Pero ano sinasabi ng angel? Wala lang. Because alam ng tatlong angel na yung pag-bend ni Lot is just a sign of respect. Tayong mga katoliko, when we bend our knee to Mary, it is not worship. Put it in your mind that we should not worship Mary, but we should worship Jesus Christ alone. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, ito, it, yan lang ang gagawin natin mga kapatid. Kaya nga, sabi dito, no, sa Catechism of the Catholic Faith, 494, at the announcement that she would give birth to the Son of the Most High without knowing men, by the power of the Holy Spirit, without knowing man. He preserved, she preserved her virginity without knowing man, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary responded with the obedience of faith, certain that with God, nothing will be impossible. Because actually in the flesh, Mary will say, how could this be happen? How could this happen to me? I'm just only a virgin, nothing, no, nobody can touch me. Kapatid, sabi ni, ni, ni God, no? Or not, ni Mary. <coughs> but you know, sabi naman ni Mary, nothing is too difficult with God. That's why virgin birth ng lumabas si Jesus Christ, it was a virgin birth. Now, ang tanong dito, after the birth of Jesus Christ, anong ginawa ni, ni San Jose? Wala! Because they received intervention by God. Kung kaya ng mga kaparian natin that they have this celibacy, bakit hindi kaya ni Jose na mayroong intervention naman sa Holy Spirit? So, kaya nila. They preserve their virginity. They preserve for the glory of God until such time na sila ay papuntang langit. It's all pure, virgin, and holy. Amen? So yun mga kapatid na dapat natin matutunan. No? Now, I would like to, to read also about the said Iranias says, Being obedient, she became the cause of salvation for herself and for the whole human because of Mama Mary's obedience, ano mga yan nangyari kapatid? We become what? We are saved and not only uh, tayo but the, the whole mankind because of her says yes. That's why we should be thankful to Mother Mary. Now, at this point in time as I embraced and uh, converted to the Roman Catholic, I continue to study more about the Virgin Mary. I continue to pray, to talk to the Mother Mary, and we even have a rosary here in this uh, in this room, no? We pray because I believe that the intercession of our Mother Mary is so powerful and effective, that can move and touch life. Wherever I go, I love to sing praise to God because I have now a mother. Before, hate namin si Mother Mary. Ngayon, love na namin si Mother Mary because of God's uh, providence, because of God's plan for us, because Mary was really designed by God for us to be part of God's plan for salvation of mankind. So that's why I urge you, brother, in the name of Jesus Christ, that each one of us must concentrate and talk to Mother Mary. Tanong, why is it that we can talk to Mary and we can pray to Mother Mary? Anong sabi ni Angel Gabriel? Mary, you will be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit of God. And the Spirit of the Lord will abide in you. In our translation, when we say about abide, in King James Version as a Protestant pastor, the word abide remains in you forever. Now, if the Holy Spirit will remain in the life of Mama Mary forever, even she is now in heaven, still we can talk to her, spirit to spirit. Our spirit can talk to Mother Mary. And Mama Mary, Mama Mary will intercede us because she can listen to us 
because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Our connecting line so that we may be able to contact Mamangari is not globe, it's not smart, smart, it is not sun, it, it is not PNT, but the Holy Spirit is our connecting line that we can talk to Mother Mary. So, Mama Mary, even until now, was being preserved. We should be thankful to God. Now, my last question. Saan natin makita ang Ark of the Covenant ngayon? Kasi wala na si Mother Mary, nandoon na sa langit. Tingnan nyo, ang laman ng covenant box, doon kaga ng bit-bit ng mga audio, is the mana, the stock of uh, Aaron, at saka yung Ten Commandments. Saan makita natin ngayon ang Ark of the Covenant? Ito lang ang isagot ko sa inyo, yung church natin. Ba kasi yung church natin, the Holy Catholic Church, nandun ang tatlo. The liturgy of the word, which is the oldest, which is the commandments of God, <coughs> the bread of life, the manna, the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. Pangatlo, yung staff ni Aaron, priest. Itong tatlong ito makita natin sa church. The liturgy of the word, the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist, at saka yung pare. Ang pare lang natin kapatid ay may karapatan to officiate, to celebrate the Holy Eucharist of God. And because of that, we should be thankful to our mother, Mother Mary. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. I will not talk too much, but it is enough for them to understand the rule of Mama Mary in our life. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I would like to acknowledge first our viewer tonight. Para naman, happy kayo. Okay? Maraming nag ano, ngayon. Ang... <coughs> Sorry. May ano ako, may obo, pero hindi ito COVID. <laughs> so, we have Sir, Sir Linda Lusada, thank you for watching. Richie Suarez, thank you for watching. Okay. Uh, Al Francis Antonis, we have Pio Imiranciana, we watch you also. Mike Gonzalez, Le Fabian, uh, Nadja Imabarti, Olivera Nig, Adora Tan, Jojo Silosilo, Julita T. Uh, si Acero Obelio Dorado Gary Joy is watching from Taytay Wizal So si Rusalyn uh, Cabadonga Rimando Johnny Van Torres Si Jane Abilanosa No, Brother Jane no? Kumusta ka? No? So We have Mary Joy Villano Okay Sa so, ano ito Member ko ito sa practice that before no? Sana magkatoliko ka na Sister will study the Catholic Catholicism Pio Emerantiana, God bless Barubu. Teresa Gakrama, Biniranda Neri, Jane Boy, Jerry Dilema, okay. Ging Maria Librado, okay, Librido, okay. Elliot Alvarez, si Acero Obelio Dorado, taas ay, bro, yung old covenant box ba ng Jewish na preserve ba ito ng mga audio? If not, Anong ibig sabihin nito? It's a good question. So, I'm going to answer that one night, later na lang. Pagka next episode. Next segment. Mansuito, parami la. By the way, I will answer you through ano na lang sa, dito sa live. So, thank you and uh, God bless us. This has been Brother Gu, Gakrama. So, if you're watching right now, I declare God will bless you. Healing and all the miracles will happen to you. And God will find favor on you. Amen. Good night.